what's up guys flash here with the second installment in the series this is going to be a video on how to make macros and all the macros that i use if you want to just skip through this video and just look in the description below and just copy and paste all the macros i use on my field druid it'll be there you can do that or you can sit here and watch and i'll show you guys how to make a macro so even if you're not going to play field druid you can learn how to make macros uh, first you want to do is go to macros you can either type in chat slash macro and it'll take you straight there or you can just press escape interface no not interface uh the option macro right there and it'll bring up your macros and there's two categories general which is for all your tunes to use in here and there is uh a certain amount you can have you have in your generals 36 macros total that you can make which i had filled at one point but i deleted a few just so that i had room and then in your character itself which only the character uh, tune itself can go into you'll have 18 in there so i mean pretty much every tune that i play at 85 is filled i mean you i mean i, I have i have a lot of macros on my guys so i usually fill this in on each character and then maybe put a few in here but you want to put everything that you want general like for more than one tune to be in here like maybe a mount macro or your trinket macros and all your tune based ones in here fill in here first and then if you have to put them in here in general uh, I don't know if that's confusing but anyways let's just talk about all my Fuero Druid macros first this my first one is my Skull Bash in cat form it's, it's basic it's just it'll Skull Bash my current target and, and uh, if I hit my modifier it'll skull bash my focus target so as you can see here I have this guy uh, as my current target and this guy as my focus target so uh, if I were to hit my uh, modifier which is control and hit my skull bash boom my skull bash is my, my focus target and I never lose my current target so I'm always hitting him so that's good I mean this is going to be good in arena uh, rated battlegrounds or just battlegrounds in general because if you're clicking guys and switching back and forth you're losing DPS and sometimes it could be a pain to try to retarget someone else so all my focus target um, macros are built like this where it's show tooltip on all my on all my macros show tooltip just shows when you hover over it the information of the spell itself I like to have that on there on my action bars uh, you don't have to have that you can just do slash cast spell or whatever but I use the show tooltip so yeah so show tooltip uh, well, number sign show tooltip skull bash and uh, a quick way to throw the spell in there which you don't have to type the whole thing out is I just have my spell book up and if you shift left click a spell it'll plop it in there like let's just say I didn't have that in there skull bash cat form and I wanted to drop it in there I would go find a spell on my spell book and left uh, shift left click and boom it drops it right in and then save done so yeah um, I have stopped casting just in case I'm casting I mean I shouldn't be casting but sometimes if I'm hard casting a cyclone and I want to get a kick off and stop casting I'll just you know hit the spell and it'll stop and then I'll just kick but yeah that's that one my second one is uh, the second one you see up here is, is my um, berserk macro all it is is just pops all my cooldowns. Uh, if if my berserk is up, it'll use Tiger's Fury before berserk. So what I gotta do is every time I hit my berserk macro, I make sure, like I said before, my focus isn't topped off because you do get that extra energy from um, Tiger's Fury. You get 60 energy when you pop that, so I don't want to waste energy. So whenever I do pop my my uh, berserk macro and Tiger's Fury is up, and I want to use them both together. Typically, whenever I use uh, Bark Skin, uh, Berserk, sorry, I want to have Tiger's Fury go off with it because that 15% extra physical damage and have the energy cost 50% less on my abilities, I kind of want them both to go off at the same time. Usually, I typically pop Bark uh, Berserk, sorry, I keep saying Bark when I have, uh, when I have combo points on a target and I have a little bit less energy. So then I pop it, get all that energy back, have Tiger's Fury up. And then I just rip into something like that. So yeah, it, 
basically this macro uses Tiger Fury before Bers Berserk because you can't use Bers uh, Tiger Fury while Berserk is up. So I use it. Use Tiger Fury, Berserk, and then uses my trinkets. Uh, my uh, Cataclysmic uh, Gladius Badge of Conquest, which gives you that 24 19 agility for 20 seconds. And then it uses my number 10, which is see, which is good about like having the numbers in here. I don't have to every time get a new like a new piece. I don't have to write or type in the new piece itself. So it just 14 is this trinket here. If you wanted to put it here, it would be 13. And and number 10 is just my gloves because I'm an engineer. I have that 480 agility for my gloves. So just say like like I say if I'm I need to use like I'm trying to get a kill and my uh. My gladiator's badge of conquest is, is on cooldown still. I, I, I try to use my gloves if they're not on cooldown. So like I still have some some some, some sort of burst, you know. Because I don't always use my gladiator's badge of conquest with berserk. Because sometimes I, I like I like to save my berserk for a kill. So uh, and then also the bottom it says cash shred in cap form. I mean you don't have to put that in there, but I, I just throw that in there just in case I don't have five common points I'll just use shred right away so that's my second one uh, one of my defensive cooldowns is my bark skin uh, macro here which will use bark skin it'll stop casting cast bark skin and nature's grass at the same time if I uh, have no modifier or if I just hold on yeah basically this uses yeah it uses nature's grass and bark skin at the same time because typically, like whenever I use bark skin, I have melee on me anyways, so it uh it'll cast nature's grass and I'll root them as well as I'm trying to get away. And then it also, if I use my modifier and use it, it'll use my cape or my uh, parachute, which is my engineer. Let's see, just save a spot on my bar. I put it in there with that uh, survival instincts. It uses it in cat or bear form. I use survival instincts and bark skin, and if I have a health zone, I use that as well. So I'll pop that. And I don't have bark uh, bark skin because that's on cooldown. I just used it, so it won't go off. But uh, bark skin isn't um, doesn't share a global cooldown with the rest of your spell, so you can use that with everything, like on one button. And what else? Um, next up is my Fural Charge. Fero charge, same thing. If I hit my modifier, all my mo my modifier spells is controls. So like, if you like shift better, you can plop in shift where I have it here. Next macro is my Shadowman pounce macro, which is pretty clutch. I mean, if I'm I have no combo points or uh, so to get a stun off, or um, I want to interrupt the healer really fast and. I don't want to have to build combo points on them, and my current target, let's just say, is him, and this is my focus target over here. I'll I'll shadow man. Right, what the fuck? Right. See, I'm in combat, and I, I don't want to build combo points on him. I'll shadow man and pounce him, and then get back on my target. You know, that'll help me out because that'll stop at least one heal before you know I build combo points up to get a cyclone off on them. So, yeah, I like that one. I, I use that mainly, honestly, against, like, you can use it defensively, like, if, say, uh, you're gonna get shattered and you're in a Nova, I've used that before, just to get at, just, to, um, the drop target so he doesn't cast Frost Bolt on you or Mage or whatever, so you're not shattered. I've used it there, I've used it a lot, mainly against, like, say a Druid gets an opener on you, or a Feral Druid in a BG, and they get the opener on you, I'll just reset the the thing by just shadow men and pouncing them and now I got the opener on them so they'll open on me I'll trinket their kidney or or their pounce their pounce if they're a druid and then I just shadow man and then open on them reopen on them which which is clutch pretty clutch so um yeah I love that man bro and so basically what it does is you just double tap it you hit shadow man so just remember not to move though because shadow shadow man isn't like a stealth move where you can move around you can press, I've used Shadow Man and then press Stealth, Prowl, because you'll get out of combat and you can use Prowl. Like I've done it real quick, where I can go press Shadow Man and then Prowl, and then I was able to run around and Stealth and get away. But like, don't move, 
make sure the target's in front of you, and if you shadow man, you can pounce them real quick. Like if you double tap it, because I have slash cast shadow man, slash cast pounce. This macro is just for my bare form, it's just mole and mangle together, slash cast mangle, slash cast mole. Uh, this is just my skull bash and bear form, the same thing as the skull bash and cat form. This one right here is my flight form macro, which allows me to use all of my shapeshift in pretty much. Like, if I'm not in combat, I go into flight form. If I'm in combat, which I'll get combat right now, and I, I can get away by going to travel form. Like that, too. Did you kite someone or whatever? You can just keep pressing it. And I also have that, uh, that, um, apostrophe. No, it's not. I don't even know what the heck that is. The upside down I in front of the travel form to allow you to spam it and you go right back into the form. Like, see, it went to every time I press the, the macro, it puts me right back into travel. So, just in case someone's trying to slow you down. I'm putting slows on you, you can shift out of them real quick. Snares, obviously that's not going to work because we get rooted now, no more power shifting, but it'll let, let you get out of uh, slows. And, and if you're in water, it'll put you in aqua form. If you're not in combat, you'll go into flight form. If you're in combat, you'll go into uh, travel form. And if you're standing still in um, a BG and you, there's no flying at all or uh, tobolar, you can it'll put you in the mount, on your mount. So this is like one button for everything, which is great. So I don't have to worry about macroin or key binding, all those different things. Uh, my next one is the same thing as my skull bash and my uh, and cat form and bear form, but it's cyclone. So basically, it allows cyclones to go off on my focus target. So if I'm on him. I build down points up. He's immune, but I cycle on my focus target, which would normally be a healer or another DPS for peels or something. So yeah, it's the same setup, slash cast, no modifier, cyclone, which allows you to cycle on your current target if you just press it. And if you, the next button, next uh, line says slash cast, modifier, control, target equals focus, cyclone, which will, if you hit your modifier, cyclone, your focus target. Love that macro. Same thing for my roots. Same setup. I'm not even going to show you that one, it's pretty simple. And then this one here is my Stampede and uh, Raw. It does Stampede and Raw in bear form and cat form. And also cancels dash. This is really clutch because since we only have two root breakers and mages are really gay, they'll Nova you and normally what I like to do is if I'm going against a mage, and they know me if they're not standing still and casting on me they're usually trying to run away because they're assuming I'm gonna break through my first route I usually typically uh, what I like to do is like if this is the mage here and he Nova's me right here if he starts to cast I'll pretend like I'm not gonna leave the Nova and I will hit the I'll hit it as he's casting like halfway through his cast I'll hit dash or stampede and raw and I'll skull bash him you might you'll get the kickoff You'll probably usually get the kickoff on them because you can hit them pretty much both at the same time. So I'll even hit dash or uh, stampede and roar, like I said, and skull bash at the same time because skull bash any old kicks are now on global. So like when you hit a, that ability, you can skull bash at the same time pretty much. So yeah, if he's running away though and he novas you, uh, he's usually a good mage. Will assume you're gonna get out of the first nova and he was getting ready to nova you again. I'll either I'll dash out of it uh, or I'll stampede roar out of the first one, and he'll nova me again either cold and cold or his regular nova or his pet nova whatever he didn't use he'll nova you again and then he'll start to cast with stampede and roar up like this you can't dash again unless you have this macro set up like I have here it says cancel or roar dash boom so it canceled it canceled stampede and roar and then use my dash so like if he nova you. Instead of having that stupid Aurora up, your speed buff from Stampede and Roar, it'll cancel it and make you dash. Which will allow you to, uh, or the opposite actually, because this is Stampede and Roar macro. So if you have dash up and you use this, it'll cancel uh, your dash and then use either Stampede and Roar on Cat or Stampede and Roar on Bear. Which is great because now you'll get out of that Nova and then you can either kick him, because he'll probably be casting, or just get back on top of him. So yeah, boom, that's that. And uh, 
what else is in this macro? Oh yeah, I put use if I use my modifier control, it uses my um, boots because I'm an engineer. So if I hit it, look, I use my rocket boots. If I use my modifier control and hit it, so more more speed. And what's good about the rocket boots, you can use it in stealth too, so that's cool. Uh, so yeah, this is clutch. Definitely want to grab this macro because the only two rule breakers we got, they won't go off at the same time. You got to cancel them. So you can just drop cancel raw dash in there or whatever. Uh, this macro is just my swipe and bear or cat form. I, I try to put the abilities together if the, if I can. The same room on that on your um, action bars because there's so many spells. I got like 36 keybinds, so it's like it's hard if I don't have them put them together. So yeah, if I'm in bear form, it swipes. Or if cat form, it swipes. If I let's say if I'm bear form, it swipes too. So yeah, same button. So it's easy to remember as well. And my hibernate, same thing as my rest of my focus target macros, like CC wise, is hibernate's my current target. If I have my control, it does my focus target. So yeah, my prowl macro, which is, is simply just like uh, that, that uh, upside down eye in front of prowl. And that just allows you to spam stealth and not get put out of stealth because when you're in combat and like you're trying to get away, like if I if I'm running and I'm kiting and I'm out of co combat, I'm waiting to get out of combat or whatever, and I'm spamming it. If you're not careful, sometimes if you're just spamming prowl, it'll put you in, and if you hit it again, it'll put you out. So like I just have the um, dot or that uh, upside down eye. I, I'm sorry, I don't even know the name of that, but uh, yeah, that'll just let you spam. It. If you put that in front of any ability, it allows you to spam it, and you won't keep casting it. So like if you have it on flare, the same thing applies, like slash cast. Uh, that upside down eye flare, it'll let you spam flare and it won't drop that circle thing. I have that on my hunter as well. Like I can spam it and it won't, it won't, it won't drop that circle thing, you know, for the flare. And all right, so this is my bear form, uh, focus target charge thing, same thing, where I can just charge my my focus, which is this guy here. Well, that's it for my Pharaoh Druid in here. I have plenty in here to use too, as well. This is uh, uh, a decurse for my teammates. Like, it just targets them and decurses them. I have that. I put that in, in there when um, I'm running threes, so that if, if someone hexes my healer, I have an, uh, a button just to get them out. So, like, slash cast, bracket, target equals your name, your teammate, close bracket remove corruption and boom you got it fury fire this is uses fury fire in all forms one button like i said i like try to like minimize the action bars as much as possible and i have fury fire into one so like if i'm bear form it'll use fury fire if i'm in human for, or caster form human for, night elf form it'll use a uh, regular fury fire which is worse than the regular uh, it's not worse but it's not as good as the Fury Fire, Fire. But, um, yeah. But, it'll use it on every form. And then, and also, if I have a focus target, which sometimes is my rogue, a rogue against, like, if we're going against a rogue team and we're not on the rogue, I like to throw Fury Fire on them without talking to them, as I did there. You see the Fury Fire on this guy? He's just my focus target. And I was still able to Fury Fire him without losing my current target, which is good against a rogue team or a Fury Druid team, anything that can stealth. So now the uh, the rogue either gotta get dispelled or use cloak to get a, a reach out. Which, so I like to keep it up as much as possible if I can remember to. Uh, all these uh, macros you see here with a question mark is another class because it won't come up because I don't have that ability. So I won't talk about them because they're, they're probably the same setup as my druid, which is the focus target macros, the modifiers and whatnot. This is my fishing one. It's stupid. Um, oh, this is my uh, my stealth my uh, my stealth finder kind of um, macro, my pounce macro. So when I'm in stealth, I spam this one. If I'm looking for like a stealth class, what it'll do? It'll it'll lose my current target, like a clear target. It's kind of like the zap macro for a rogue, but for Fury Druid, it clears the target and then targets enemy stealth if they're there or if they're close to me, and then casts pounce on them like. Say this is a rogue over here, I'm looking at spamming it, and boom, I get them. And then it automatically hits them, and puts, uh, pounces them, and then 
if I keep spamming it, it puts uh, rake on them as well. So, I mean, you already have a bleed on them, which is for me a pounce, but I, I try to put rake on them right away. So, just in case they try to run away or vanish, they still have a bleed on them. So, yeah, that's that one. Uh, this one here, what is this one? Oh, this is my bear um, charge macro. The same one as my my one in bear form, like I have two of them, I guess. One in bear form, but that bar only comes up when I'm in bear form. My other one down here, uh, if you can see uh, the action bars on the top, the two that are right next to each other. The, those two don't change. The one on the very, very, very bottom, that changes with my stance. So say if I'm in cat form, I can't bear charge unless I go into bear form, which is another button to press. But this macro here, I plop up here on the action bar above the stance changing action bar, let's just call it that. And I'm still able to charge, like, boom. I use charge on uh, mainly chitin classes because it snares them in place. So I use this macro to, to stop them from running like so mage blinks. I charge him, now he's stuck there. So even if he's nova in me, he can't move for uh, four seconds. Yeah, you mobilize for four seconds. It's kind of, it doesn't stun them, but it immobilizes them. It's like a root. So I use that on hunters, mages, and that's typically it. I can't think of anybody else. Or someone really trying to get away and they're getting peels. I might charge them in bear form rather than cat form. Bear form's on a shorter cooldown too, so keep that in mind. So like if I'm charging in bear form all the time, I'm gonna have that more uh, up more often than that if I'm charging in uh, cat form. Although charging in cat form gives you that free ravage, which hits pretty hard. It's still better to charge in bear form if the if the target's running. So if the target isn't running, you really nece don't necessarily need to charge them in bear form. But yeah. Uh, this is the dash macro I have. The same thing as uh, Stampede and Roar. It cancels Stampede and Roar if it's bear or cat form. And it does it even if someone else puts it on. Say, like, you're playing in a battleground and someone else has used it. And you're trying to dash out of a Nova and you can't. You can't figure out why. It's because someone else cast it and they're near you and you didn't even know. So this will cancel it and help you get out of another route. And if you're not in cat form, it also puts you in cat form. I forgot to say that too. Like if I'm not in cat form, like I'm in bear form and I'm rooted like this and say I'm about to get shattered and I mean in bear form you'll take a lot less damage from a shatter but inst instead of taking a shatter at all you can just get out of it by just pressing this macro and it'll dash me and put me in bear, um, what's it called, cat form. Uh, oh this is my stance, uh, or yeah my stance like dancing I guess you can call it whatever. Um, macro it just allows me to whatever form I'm in I can just hit this macro and it will never it'll put me right back in it so if I'm slowed it'll get me this like I say I'm hitting it right now puts me right back in the bear every time so instead of hitting like say if you were hitting the bar down here it'll put you out into castle form and then back into into bear and there's a chance that you get caught up in between if you're doing it like that but if you press this macro here it'll it'll put you right back into it so you don't ever want to be caught in caster form, you get hit a lot harder, so I like to just to have that key bound up here in my right corner. Um, cat form, same thing, it does the same thing. Travel form, it does the same thing. Oh, well. I just hit... <laughs> I, just like that. Uh, on targets or on yourself, the HP is just so high now, I only get, if I get lucky and get a crit, it's like 30. 30k, which is nothing. I'd rather waste it on either rooting someone or cycling somebody or just hotting out my partner instead of using heal and touch. But yeah, Tiger's Fury. This is um, my Tiger's Fury macro that just puts my my um, my gloves, my enchant for uh, not my enchant, my uh, engineering gloves will go off with my Tiger's Fury. So like this is on a one minute cooldown. My gloves which is 480 agility. So like whenever I pop Tiger's Fury and I'm not popping Berzar, uh, Berserk or my Trinket, it'll use my gloves. What else I got here? Uh, oh yeah, my Moonfire, which is great right here. Moonfire macro. It casts Moonfire on my focus target, if I have a focus target, or my current target. And why do I need to use Moonfire? Moonfire is great 
for killing ground and totems. And before I get my cyclones grounded, I typically like Moonfire. Like when you're in an arena and you're playing against a good shaman, he's gonna drop the ground and totem the moment you get part of the strike. And he try to dispel you probably. So what I do is I ground, I, I hit him with Moonfire, which will, will the ground and will eat that, and then I cycle him. Like I try to do it as fast as possible because, like I said, he's gonna be trying to dispel. That's all they do is dispel my Predator Strike, which is pretty annoying in arena. But what can you do? They're all gonna do it. It's really gay. Either they mass dispel it, purge it, dispel it, whatever. They just they just try to take it off of you to try to nullify some of your CCs and grounding is just one way to get in your way to get you know to get it off like that's one global cooldown that you have to use before you can even get a cyclone off that gives him a half a second to purge you again to maybe get it off but yeah so keep up your buffs so that he has to dispel buffs before he gets to your pressure strike maybe you know so but I like I said this just kills granite totems this is great for um RBGs when you hear a ground and totem go off or you see a ground and totem go off, you just kill it so that your teammates don't waste shatters or whatever. So yeah. And this is my arena. Um cyclones. It's slash cast bracket target equals arena one cyclone. And then underneath this is slash cast bracket target equals arena one modifier control bracket skull bash cat form. So this is basically my skull bash and my cyclone and cat form. Oh my no. My skull bash and cat form and my cyclone all in all for arena one all in one macro so if i just hit it it cyclones them if i hit my modifier which is always control it'll skull bash them so you, you gotta have this if you're playing threes because you can't be targeting or retargeting um all three of those uh the arena players like your opponent your opponents you can't you don't have time to be clicking and trying to target people, so especially if they're stealth. If you're playing stealth classes like a few uh, a resto druid, and you open one of one of his teammates, you don't know where the hell this guy is. And when he finally pops out, he's either going to be casting cyclone or trying to heal his teammate, and you don't have him as your focus yet because he was in stealth the whole time. And if he's like, let's say, arena target three, I have a macro for that. So as soon as he comes out and I have predator strikes, I can throw a cyclone on him and stop him from healing. Boom, right there. And the same thing goes for rogues. Rogues, which are annoying because they are always re-stealthing in combat somehow, some way they vanish or get a re -stealth. And then you lose them as your focus target and you can't peel off with cyclones or whatever. And this will help you just get it without even targeting them. So you can even have a healer focus and let's just say a DPS focus and you're trying to cyclone the second guy which you don't have targeted or focus targeted. You don't have to ever lose you know, him as a target. You can just cyclone him. You can throw hibernate in there like I was going to put slash cast target equals Serena 2 uh, modifier shift it was hibernate or root or something like that but I only find cyclone and skull bash as useful. Cause I'm never really rooting people unless I had to and then this macro here is my mouse over focus target macro which I use constantly I can't tell you how useful this macro is because like I can just be in a BG and I can see someone healing and I can just hover over them without even losing my target and press this macro and boom he's my focus target I use it on all my tunes that's why it's in general and it's just so handy I love it and that's about it. Uh, I have another ma macro for my mounts for other guys. Like, I use a snow griffin, and then if I'm in water, it uses that seahorse crap. Well, all this other crap is just useless. But yeah, that's everything pretty much. I have uh, another ground and totem killer for my hunter. It's this one here, it's the growl. The growl, so your pet growl can eat the totem. But yeah, that's pretty much it. That's it guys, thanks for watching, um, if you have any questions leave it in the comments below, and all the macros that you see in this video should be in the description below, if not just let me know, and if you guys need any help making macros, just hit me up and I can help you out, and also um, look out for my next video, which is going to be all my add-ons and how I set mine up and whatnot. so yeah, see you guys next time, and thanks for watching, later.